intention of today's Mass is thanksgiving for Robert Lewoski and Jean-Claude Rowe's birthday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and with you as well. My friends, on this day of Advent, when we celebrate this time of longing for the coming of Christ and for the completion of our full humanity, let us ask for his forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the childbearing of the Holy Virgin graciously reveal the radiance of your glory to the world, grant, we pray, that we may venerate with integrity of faith the mystery of so wondrous an incarnation and always celebrate it with due reverence through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of Judges. There was a certain man from Zorah of the clan of the Danites whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and had borne no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, though you are barren and have had no children, yet you will conceive and bear a son. Now then, be careful to take no wine or strong drink and to eat nothing unclean. As for the son, you will conceive and bear no razor shall touch his head. For this boy is to be consecrated to God from the womb. It is he who will begin the deliverance of Israel from the power of the Philistines. The woman went and told her husband, a man of God came to me. He had the appearance of an angel of God, terrible indeed. I did not ask him where he came from, nor did he tell me his name. But he said to me, you will be with child and will bear a son. So take neither wine nor strong drink and eat nothing unclean, for the boy shall be consecrated to God from the womb until the day of his death. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew up and the Lord blessed him. The spirit of the Lord stirred him. The word of the Lord. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing of your glory. My mouth shall be filled of your praise, and I will sing of your glory. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing of your glory. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing of your glory. I will treat of the mighty works of the Lord. O God, I will tell of your singular justice. 
O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and because both were advanced in years. Once, when he was serving as priest in his division's turn before God, according to the practice of priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then, when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of God. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers toward children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous, to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day all these things come to pass because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them. And they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then, when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. The Gospel of the Lord. There's an old saying that says that we were born with two ears and one mouth so that we would listen twice as much as we speak. It's good advice, not always followed. But I think we have a vivid example of that in today's gospel narrative. The story of the unbelief of Zechariah, his failure to listen to the message, his failure to hear really what the angel was saying to him. And therefore, he is rendered speechless, a terrible cross for any priest that I know. 
But this message is not meant only for priests. It's also meant for all those who seek to be disciples of Christ Jesus our Lord. Later on, Jesus would say that his mother and brother and sisters and true family are those who hear and heed God's word. We all need to hear and heed, not just to hear, not just to detect the sounds, but to listen, to grasp, to comprehend, to integrate the message of the scriptures and the revelation of God's truth that he gives to us, both in scripture, in the living tradition of the church, and in the lived experience and teaching of the church. Today, during this Advent season, a season when we focus on this longing to be made complete by God's coming into the world and into our lives, we are asked to listen more deeply and profoundly to what it is that God says to us. And to do that, we need to pray in such a way that we are not only telling God what he ought to do for us, but also listening, even if all we seem to hear is silence, listening for the way in which God moves us in the depths of our soul, for that is the answer to the prayers that we offer. Let us pray today that we, like Zechariah, who did not at first listen, will come to hear and heed and believe and act on the word of God, which truly makes us God's own family. With faith that God desires only our good, we now come to him with our prayers and petitions. For our Holy Father, our bishops, and for all who exercise authority in the church, may the Holy Spirit draw them ever closer to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For governments and world leaders, may the Advent message of hope inform and direct their decisions and actions. We pray to the Lord. For all who live with conflict in their lives, both the conflict of internal struggle, family difficulties, and war itself, especially in the Ukraine and in Gaza, may God, the source of true peace and justice, conform their hearts to walk in his light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For this faith community gathered here and online, that as we journey through Advent, it may be a time of renewal and blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. For all our faithful departed for whom we pray at this time, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And for the intention of today's Mass, for Thanksgiving for Robert Lewoski and Jean-Claude Rose, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, there is nothing more powerful than your grace and mercy. Hear our prayers and grant them, we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we lay upon your altars, that what we bring, despite our weakness, may be sanctified by your power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we proclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death when we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Teresa of Avila, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we give thanks, Almighty God, for these gifts you have bestowed, graciously arouse in us, we pray, the desire for those yet to come, that we may welcome the nativity of our Savior and honor it with minds made pure through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to remain with us for the devotional prayers immediately after Mass today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for God's blessing. Rejoicing in this holy time of Advent with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, may you be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.